Good morning. Those of you who are making your way in, come on in. I hope that's not me. I apologize. Um, welcome to Trinity. Welcome to our Oasis service. I am really excited to see all of you guys here this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements as we get started. You may have noticed that Roy is not here, so you're stuck with me. And for that, I apologize. Um, that does mean we will not have communion today. So just, we didn't forget it. We just, we're not going to be able to do that. So, um, couple of announcements, like I said, ice cream social is today at three in here. And so because of that, I'm going to ask you all to do me a really big favor. After service, if you would be so kind as to move your chairs, fold them up, move them to the side, that'll be a great help for those ladies and gentlemen who are going to come in and set up for the ice cream social. Um, just to let you know, Miss Judy Swanson is going to be floating around today. She is sponsoring a team for the Alzheimer Walk that's coming up at the end of September. And if you would like to help Miss Judy be a part of that, walk with her. Um, you know, Alzheimer's is very important to her and her family. Um, her husband passed away from that years ago. So um, if you'd like to help support Miss Judy, find her, and I'm sure she'd be happy to give you some more information about that. The last announcement that I have is September 4th, Labor Day weekend, we are going to do one service at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary. So I um, hope you join us for that. We're going to have food and fellowship and just fun times out on the lawn afterwards. So I hope that you can join us for that. Um, that is all the announcements that I have. Again, I'm very excited to see each and every one of you here today. We've got Kyra back, so we're very excited to have her. Um, she's going to play a few songs for us. We're going to do our first song, then we'll greet each other, and um, then we'll continue with our service. But before we get started with that, if you all would join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much that we have this opportunity to gather today. We ask that you make your presence known in this service. Be with each and every person here and just fill us with your love and your grace and your mercy. Help us to take those things out as we leave today and share them with all that we meet. In your holy name we pray. Amen. It's like 
wonderful Sunday morning. This is normally our children's moment time, but when we do the, the Sunday before our back to school, we use that time for our back to school blessing. We do not just bless the children, but anybody that works in the schools, um, any support staff, our preschool folks here, anybody who has any sort of connection to children this year, we want to bless 
everyone. So if you would like to step forward and just sort of circle around the room, um, you can bring your backpacks, kiddos. Mm -hmm. And teachers, support staff, anybody who, a professor, in, you can stand up. We can stand up and circle around. And if you didn't bring your backpack, we're blessing you, so come on up. If you are going to school for any reason, <laughs> if you brought the dog and he's going to obedience school, bring him up. <laughs> oh, that's right, students that were teachers, that's amazing, yes. So today, uh, for your blessing of the backpack tag, this was an idea that was borrowed. Um, we created our own, but it was found uh, several years ago and, and on our server. And it's donut. Donuts start school without some wholesome advice. Donuts settle for less than your best. Donut forget to smile. Donut give up. Donut forget that you are loved a whole lot. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And that is Philippians 4, 6. And you have a donut eraser, so that when you make little mistakes in life, you can remember, it's okay, you can start over. So we're going to say a quick prayer, and then Miss Catherine's going to come along with the bag and let you grab your backpack tag, and do not eat the donut. <laughs> I don't care how hungry you are at school this year, do not eat this donut. You were going to eat it, Joshua? That's why I'd better say something about it. Okay, we'll, we'll give just a second to make sure. Are we, we okay? Okay. That, if that works, yes. Okay. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and pray now. Lord, you've created us so that we might know you in every way. Bless these children, Lord, so that through science, they see your design in every creature and living thing. Through reading, they see how you've opened the doors of knowledge. Through math, they see how you enabled us to count the many blessings you've provided. Through language, they see how you let us understand each other. Through history, they see how you've worked in our world even before we were here. As these children carry their backpacks and other items to and from school, bless them with an attitude of optimism and confidence as they receive their assignments, do their homework, and embark on the adventure of learning. As they take pencil and paper in hand, ask questions, search for answers, grant them an eagerness for learning, a hunger for understanding, a desire for creativity, an ability for application, and a sense of wonder and awe in all that they do. Open the eyes and hearts of the teachers, administrators, and support staff. Use them to assist our children in navigating the school year. Pour into them encouragement, hope, patience, and love, enough to overflow into the classrooms, hallways, and hearts that they enter this year. Bless the children and their teachers so that they learn from each other, respect each other, and encourage each other. Prevent negativity and hurtful speech from finding a home in any part of our schools, hallways, cafeterias, classrooms, gyms, and even school buses. Cover each student and staff member with protection. Help each student feel connected, accepted, and seen. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. A reading from Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being re renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator. Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, 
or free. For Christ is in all, is all, and is in all. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Good morning. So I'm going to lead us in prayer. And I know it's an exciting week with all of the students going back and all the teachers and everything, but we need to bless the families too because we need a good support system. Move that back. So I know everybody's got a prayer request because it's just, we mean to. So just keep everybody in mind here. Dear Lord, it's an exciting week as we start back to school this week for families as well as students and teachers. Thank you for this day and all the possibilities it holds. Thank you for walking with us when we are scared, alone, or anxious. And the gift of the Holy Spirit who comes through our life like a fresh breeze. Lord, please hear the prayers of our community and our church family. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hail King Jesus. 
scripture lesson today comes from Luke 12, 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide my fam the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will, build, I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and all the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So bigger is better, right? If a 75-inch TV is good, an 85-inch TV, 85 TV must be better. If one bass guitar is good, two must be even better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Had to pick on him just a little bit. Why get the small cable package when the big one has so many more channels? And of course, I'll step on my own toes. Why get the medium Starbucks when the large one's just a wee bit more? I remember seeing a bumper sticker years ago that said, the, ones who, the one who dies with the most toys wins. But do they really? Because let's be honest, the one who dies with the most toys still dies. And you can't take it with you. The things that we gather up here on earth are going to stay here on earth. Part of this message makes, makes sense to us. We understand it. We know that we don't necessarily need everyone and in every color they come in. That message is the same as it was then as it is now. But we also have to be aware that there are some differences. These people in the time that would have originally heard this parable did not understand or did not participate in the idea of investments and saving up for the future. Those are new ideas. Those are things that, that speak to us. So we're dealing with a set of rules that was laid out for a culture that's very different. But that doesn't mean that the rules no longer apply. It means we need to look at them and learn and see how they do apply to us today in this different time. As I said, those who heard this parable from Jesus, the idea of an investment and saving up like we do was a foreign concept. When they heard this story, to them, the ideas that are discussed mean that the, the, uh, the things that are stored away are finite. That's all there is. So in this case, we're talking about food. I'm sure you guys are with me. You've been to that potluck church. You're near the end of the line and you're going, oh no. I hope they don't run out of that good mac and cheese. Please let there just be one more brownie left when I get there. And we laugh. It's a great thing to have this problem, to have all these people to church potluck and scared you're going to run out of food. Because we're all going to leave that potluck and know there's another meal available. These are our first world problems here. But this is not how the disciples and those hearing the parable would have understood it. Again, they're not saving up for a rainy day. This is not the story of Pharaoh, of Joseph telling Pharaoh that he's got to make those stores for the famine to come. This is one man and his crop. And he's taking it all and he's storing it away and it's all for him. He has so much that his barns that he has are no longer sufficient. He's got to tear them down and big bigger ones to hold everything. Again, think in finite terms. To those who hear this, this man has all the food available and he has stored it up for himself and himself alone. He's not sharing any of it. He won't go hungry anytime soon, but there may be those around him who are starving. He's then told he might die, he's going to die that very night. What good is all that food stored up? He's not going to be here anymore. John Wesley is quoted as saying, Make all you can. Save all you can so that you can give all you can. It comes from a sermon called The Use of Money, and it is a correct quote, 
But if you go through and take time to read that sermon, he expands on it so much more. And we see that really giving is the end goal of what he's getting at. Gain all you can doesn't just refer to money. Wesley's talking about all of life. He wants us to experience all that God has to give us, whether it's food, whether it's the beautiful nature outside, whether it's love between brothers and sisters. We need to enjoy all the blessings God is giving us. Save all you can, it goes in that same vein. Don't waste what we've been given, whether it is the food on your table or the money in your pocketbook. Don't waste your time and don't waste the experiences that come our way. We need to savor those moments of life, the ones that make life worth living. And lastly, give all you can. And this is where the man with the barn really fails. He has more than he will ever possibly need, yet he hoards it all. He could give it away to so many and share it with all those around him, but he holds on tight to it. So if we earn all we can and save all we can, we are then able to give all we can. We are able to take what we have been blessed with and share it with those around us. Contrary to the bumper sticker, we don't get bonus points at the end for having the most. In fact, it might get counted against us in some ways. We also need to look at this story from a different point of view. What about the laborers who brought in the crop? Did they get a share of this surplus? They did the work, but we're not told that they got any extra. The landowner didn't do any work. He just collected it all. His laborers worked hard in that hot sun to bring in this crop, and yet they received nothing extra. Common sense would say if there was a massive surplus, it took extra work to get in. But again, we don't know that they got anything extra. And yes, this does sound a little bit about my, like my sermon a couple weeks ago, and we think to ourselves, well, that's not fair. We don't know what the agreement was, but we do know that they worked hard, and it seems like they should get a little something extra for that. The landowner didn't do anything, so why alone should he benefit? And then we know that he's going to die that very night. He's not going to get to enjoy any of it anyway. One commentary even goes so far to hypothesize that he didn't die in his sleep, but the, his unjust ways have caught up with him in the form of a revolt. His workers have turned against him and killed him for his unjust treatment. It's a harsh suggestion, but again, it speaks to how cruel the landowner really is in this situation. I think we all understand that greed is a bad thing. It's one of those seven deadly sins. We use it as an insult to describe people sometime. We tell our children, don't be greedy and take more than one cookie or piece of candy. I know you all know that greed is bad and I don't think we need to have a whole sermon about it, but that's what we're going to do. Um, so we know we're not, we know we're not supposed to be greedy. I can't imagine any of us hoarding all the food while people around us starve. We get it. But the landowner takes his barns and takes his wealth. And if you remember, he uses the word my to describe it. My barns, my grain, my goods. Mine, mine, mine. If y'all are finding Nemo fans, maybe you can hear the little seagull in the back going, mine, mine, mine. If you don't see, if you've never seen Finding Nemo, I promise it's in there. <laughs> when we look at this parable, we need to think a bit more about where all that comes from. Where do our blessings come? We need to remember from whom all of our blessings flow. We have an abundance of something, and God has given that to us. You may be blessed monetarily. You may be blessed in other ways. People who have a green thumb. You might have an abundant garden. I know that I have been blessed by the tomatoes that just appear in the main office and I get to take them home and have a fresh tomato and cheese sandwich. Those are blessings to me. Some of you have singing ability and you share those beautiful talents, whether you sing, you play in mu musical instruments, you share those talents with us on Sunday morning to glorify God. And those of us who don't have that musical talent take joy in your sharing. Maybe you're blessed in other areas. Maybe you're blessed as a teacher or someone who offers guidance. Even the gift of sewing. I remember a number of those hand-sewn masks that were made during the height of the pandemic. People shared those blessings with others. And what good are our blessings if we just keep them stored away? The tomatoes are gonna rot. 
If the music goes unheard, nobody enjoys it. And if you're like me and you sew, if the material doesn't get used, it just sits there and takes up space. All of those blessings are better when they're shared with others. And of course, there's the blessing of God's love and mercy. You kind of had to know I was going to end up here, right? God's mercies, God's love is our greatest blessing. He sent his son to die for us so that we could live eternally with God. We don't need to store up that love and mercy. It comes new to us each and every day. There's no need to hoard it. If you continue to read in chapter 12, Jesus talks about the ravens. They have no barns to store things in, yet they don't worry about what they will need for tomorrow. Worry is not going to add a single day to our life. In fact, studies have shown that worry may take some days away. We need to live our lives in a way that we share our blessings with everyone we meet. And that's the amazing thing about God's blessings for us. They're not going to run out and we can't use them up. There's more and more. In fact, I think the more we're blessed and the more we share those blessings, the more we're blessed again. We don't need to store them up. We don't need to build a bigger barn. We need to give in and give knowing that we're never going to reach the bottom of our surplus. The last part of this passage, the landowner continues. He says, I have all that I need. I can now eat, drink, and be merry. And God responds, you fool. Treasures that we collect here on earth are going to stay here on earth. If we sit back and say, we're done, we're also fools. As long as we're here, our race is not yet run. Our seasons of life may change, and how we share our blessings may change. But that doesn't mean we stop sharing those blessings. We just do it differently. Believe it or not, the pumpkin patch is already on my brain. Seems like it should be far off, but it's not. And there are so many different ways we can help with the pumpkin patch. Everything from the physical setup to manning the patch while it's open, making muffins, and prayer. Even prayer. We need to pray for those who are working the patch and pray for those who will be receiving funds from the patch. Where you may be able to help may be different from the person sitting next to you, and it may be different from the way you helped last year. But we each have an opportunity to give out of that abundance, whether it's our time, our money, or our prayers. Many areas we give back. There are many ways to do it. There's not just one, and that's the beautiful thing about it. And I say all this not as a shameless plug for helping with the pumpkin patch, but as an example of how we can all do different things to help in one area. Having said that, pumpkin patch signups will be coming soon. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get it in there. So think, what blessings might you be holding on to tightly? What do you have that you may be able to share more freely with others? Where do you see an abundance in your life that others might not, that you need to share? We don't get to take a trailer of stuff with us when we leave this earth. It does us no good to store up those things here but what joy we can receive if we share those with the others around us. So as we leave this place today, I challenge you to share those blessings. And remember, they're not going to run out. They're never going to run dry. We've been blessed out of God's abundance and God's love, his unfailing and never-ending love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Kyra. Kyra will be back with us again next week, so very excited about that. I hope that this service has been a meaningful time for you, and I hope that you feel renewed and, and, and refreshed to go out into the world. Um, best of luck to all the students and teachers this week. I know it's going to be a fun one. And so now, if you would please join me as we say our benediction together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your heart and set them on fire. Amen. <laughs>